Hi there, my name is Professor Matthew Nichols, and today I'm going to be going over the different mallet instruments that are commonly found in the percussion section of a wind ensemble or an orchestra or a percussion ensemble. Now this video is, like I said, a quick overview, so if you have any questions about anything that I say, or if you're wondering for more information about each of these instruments, feel free to reach out by sending me an email or leaving me a comment below. This is also going to be a video that is done a little bit more like a vlog style, so I apologize if you get motion sick. Um, but I'm going to just talk from here and then show you the instruments because I'm currently in one of our wonderful practice rooms here at FAU uh, where all these instruments are located. So we'll start with the two instruments that have the lower sounding registers. And the first one is made of wood, and that one is the marimba. I'm going to show you our marimba here. This marimba is made of rosewood, and it has not only the keys that you can play on, but as well it has these resonators on the bottom to help the sound of each bar uh, last a little bit longer than if there were no resonator. Um, the sound would just travel away and dissipate quickly, but the resonator kind of captures some of that and allows for a fuller sound. Now, the marimba that we play can be played with many different mallets. Uh, the pair of mallets that I have today are a, um, a yarn-covered mallet. So you generally want to use a softer mallet because the lower register and the fact that it's made of wood can uh, cause it to be damaged with harder mallets. Um, but also those harder mallets will get a harsher sound, a more brittle sound. Um, so marimba mallets usually are a little bit uh, softer, um, although they can get pretty hard. And they're usually wrapped with some sort of yarn and either a wood or a synthetic core uh, on the inside. Here's a quick little POV demonstration. And this instrument here uh, is five octaves in, oh, I'm staying back far enough. It's a five octave instrument. So it goes from a low C below the bass clef staff all the way to the high C um, which is two octaves above the treble clef. Now, common sizes, if not full five octaves, um, would be an instrument that ends on a low A, and it would be four and one-third octave. And it can not only be made with rosewood, but it can also be made with a synthetic material um, called Keylon, and that's a, a material that's a little bit, um, it's just as resonant, but it's a little bit harder and it's resistant to wear and tear, so it's often used in marching bands or outdoor scenarios uh, where the rosewood would get damaged easily. Now the next instrument with a low register um, that's not made of wood is the vibraphone. And I have a vibraphone right here. Vibraphones uh, are typically three octaves, uh, but you can also have a three and a half octave um, that goes down to a low C or you could even have uh, four octaves if you want the extended range. This instrument also has resonators, um, but the difference is, is because it's made of metal, it's very, the, the metal will resonate for so long that sometimes we want to be able to have more control over how long it lasts. So we have a sustain pedal, which is the same as a piano sustain pedal, where if I press the pedal down, um, there's this felt strip here in the middle that's currently pressing up on the bars, if I press down on the pedal, that will allow the bars to sit and ring freely. The kinds of mallets that we will use on an instrument like this are similar to a marimba mallet, but we're going to use something that's a little bit, uh, that can allow us to, to wrap it a little bit denser around the core. And so this is a cord wrapped mallet as opposed to a yarn wrapped mallet. I think about um, embroidery floss uh, or some of those friendship bracelets that you can make using the same material. And this is allowing for a little bit more of a concentrated tone on the instrument, as well as the ability um, to hear the, the core a little bit better. And the core of the instrument, of uh, the mallet, could be a same, it could be a hard core uh, wood or a hard plastic, or it could be a little bit softer with some sort of rubber um, or a rubber sheath around it. I'm going to play a couple notes here on this instrument for you. I'll play without the pedal. And now I'll press the pedal down.
can hear how the sound really uh, can bleed when you have the pedal down. So when you're playing an instrument like this, make sure that you are very careful about your decisions of when to use the pedal to allow it to ring and when not to use the pedal. Another thing that common uh, vibraphones will have is a fan in the middle of the resonators and it'll be attached to a motor so that it can spin and it can create this vibrato effect. I don't have that on here today, but I'll insert a little demonstration of a um, vibraphone that has that. Okay, now that we've talked about the two instruments with the low registers, let's talk about the two instruments with the high registers. We're going to go back to wood. We're going to talk about the xylophone. So the xylophone is a instrument that is going to be starting from the high register of the marimba and to continue on even higher in sound. This instrument is three and a half octaves with a low F all the way to a high C but you can also find instruments that are from C to C or even four octave instruments that go down to a low C. Um, this is a most common setup. Um, it can be made with rosewood like the marimba, tuned differently to allow for a brighter sound than the marimba is. Um, but it can also be made with the kilon as well so that if you want to use it in an outdoor setting, you don't have to worry about damage naturally happening. Now, as you can tell, I don't have yarn on my mount, so I'm going to play this with because I want something that's going to be bright enough to match the brightness of this instrument. So we'll use either a wooden mallet made of rosewood or we'll use plastic or rubber mallets um, hard enough to get that articulation but not so hard to damage the instrument. So I'm going to play just a couple of notes on here. Now the last instrument that we have today is going to be the highest sounding instrument of the four instruments that we've talked about. And it's gonna be made of metal again, and this is the glockenspiel. So the glockenspiel is another instrument that has many different ranges depending on the instrument that you purchase or have access to. Uh, this instrument here is from a low F to a high C, um, but typically you'll see um, two and a half octave or two and, a, two and a third octaves that will go from the high C down to a low G. They won't have this extended range. Or you may see them with extended ranges that go above to a high D or a high E. Now this instrument sounds two octaves above where it's written. It's a transposing instrument. Um, and so this is also sitting, this lowest F will sit towards the top of the vibraphone instead of um, being, you know, an instrument that sounds lower or even an instrument that sounds higher. Now we're dealing with our mallets that are the hardest of all the instruments necessary because these are metal bars that need to have enough of a brightness to them so that we can get a clear sound. If it's too soft of an, a mallet, you'll get the tone of the bar, but it won't be clear and it won't um, speak clearly in an ensemble. So we have a really hard plastic head on this. Some people will use metal mallets like brass or aluminum. Um, I tend to use uh, these harder plastics just because they get the same sound without uh, having a chance of damaging the instrument. Uh, now can I use this mallet on a xylophone? Perhaps, but it may cause damage. Um, could I use a xylophone mallet on the bells? There are some that cross over quite nicely. But real quick, I'm going to play just a couple of notes on the bells. So this instrument is a very beautiful instrument, but it requires a mallet that can be nice and hard. So be careful when choosing your mallets. I always like to take a mallet and test it before I go to play to see is this gonna get a nice bright sound or is it the sound, the exact sound that I want. 
So hopefully you've enjoyed this overview. Again, we were hanging out with a marimba that we used a yarn mallet, a vibraphone that uses a chord mallet similar to a vibra, uh, similar to a marimba mallet. And then we had the two high instruments like the xylophone that uses a plastic mallet as well as the bell kit that we use another hard plastic or metal mallet. So make sure that you're getting the sound that you need from each instrument, uh, as well as just be taking care of the instrument, using something that won't damage it, um, and then ultimately figuring out, is this the right sound that you need, and is this going to achieve the job? And that'll take care of most of what you need. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me or leave a comment below and I hope to see you in the next video.